love when coaches, consultants, and professional service providers want to do big things in their business. They want to rise to the top and influence their market and the world around them. They want to have a greater impact and make a more lucrative income. Well, if this is you, welcome to Expert in You Podcast, the show where I interview other experts and coaches, consultants, so that they can share their success strategies with you. We're going to talk about marketing and how to close more sales, how to get more premium clients, and how to really build your visibility in the market and scale your business like a boss. If this is you, welcome to the show. I want to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss one episode. Grab your coffee and buckle up because we are ready to give it all to you to help you become the expert and get paid as the expert that you are. Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you back to another episode of Expert in You Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Carden, and I am so excited for my guest today. It seems like it has been a long time coming to get him on, just different things that happen in business. And But here we are. I have Chaz Horn, the one and only Chaz Horn, on here with me today. He's a founder and a consultant. He's an expert in client acquisition. He's great on LinkedIn. I mean, I could like go on and on and on about his accolades. So anyways, Chaz, welcome to the, yeah, <laughs> bring it on. Welcome to yeah. the show. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Anne. I appreciate the introduction. Yeah. I look, for, I've been looking forward to this conversation for three years now. No, yeah. it's only been a few months. <laughs> I know. I know. We've been connected for so long, though. And we actually we met on LinkedIn, and which, you know, LinkedIn's a gold mine. And I talk about that all, that all the time. And I know you do too. But yeah, that, you know, you can just build such great relationships with people through LinkedIn. And I know that's your main playing field. And that's my main playing field um, as well. But today we are going to talk about shifts in perspective. You know, we're seeing a lot of things go on in the coaching and consulting industry. So we're going to tap into that a little bit, maybe client acquisition. But we also want to talk about the mindset, the shifts in perspective that are even more important, I think, as we see this economic downturn and these things that are Mm. going on out there. Do you agree, Chaz? I do agree. We are, I'm not an economist. Most economists get it wrong, but something (laughs) definitely is happening and we're definitely due for a downturn. And I'm an optimist, not a realist, but I just, something's something's coming and the marketplace Mm -hmm. has definitely shifted. It is shifting. I've already seen that. And I think we already were seeing that with AI. Uh, mm, coming into the scene. Yeah. And then, you know, and then we have sort of the economic downturn. And then I don't know if you're aware of this, Chaz, but I just read some statistics the other day that 2.5 million new coaches and consultants are coming into the industry every single year, which means in the last four years, there have been 10 million new coaches and consultants enter this space, which means everyone, you need to be at the top of your game. Absolutely. Oh. 100%. No can't skate by anymore right yeah exactly right you know you're saying saying that and we we're joking about a, a toenail coach you know i was uh, you know because yeah, like to a, explain that i gotta hear what yeah, that is so ann and i before we got started i go yeah the coaches there's a there's a plethora of coaches getting into the the market you know 20 year old life coaches uh getting into the the marketplace um with the exception of uh, what's your name from everything is figure outable um uh what is her name she wrote the book she was a 20 year old life coach now she has maria what is her name uh she wrote the book everything is figure outable i don't anyway. think i know what that is i am yeah yeah, yeah so no, anyway okay. so she had but she started being a 20 year old life coach and i joke about that but there is so many people coming into the marketplace and that's why i like work with consultants i used to work more mm-hmm. with coaches but i the main thing is you just have to have a real expertise and you alluded to this and when you were talking about this it's not about quantity it's about quality and all the information is out there yes. all the information is out there it's been out there but with ai there's so many people putting so many things out there and so how do you differentiate yourself yes you know, one of the main ways is you got to be you you got to be yourself and so many people try to imitate as opposed to learn from someone's systems and processes and Mm -hmm. try to be someone they're not. And that's a way for burnout, for failure. But yes, there's a lot of coaches on the market, in the market today, 
And so what's going to differentiate you from anyone else? And mm. that's why I work with consultants. I have nothing against coaches. I still work with with coaches, but typically consultants are someone who's been in the the business a little bit longer mm -hmm. and they have an expertise because they have experience and a background. And so that's my focus as well as is B2B businesses. Yeah. Now, do you, Chaz, I know you do both. I, I hear you uh, talking about sales. You're definitely a sales expert. I know you come from that world. And I hear you doing a lot of lives and videos and things like that on around sales. You, But you also do the client acquisition piece of it. So you do some of the marketing piece as well. Where would you say you're more focused heavy? Is it the sales or the marketing? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> so and when Ann's saying client acquisition, I, I think you're probably talking about marketing. So mm -hmm. marketing is about speaking to your spe the specific need and want of your target audience in such a way so they have confidence in you and your solution mm -hmm. being able to solve their problem. Then sales is about conversion, converting into meetings, converting into clients. Mm -hmm. So when I first started my business in 2016, it was all about sales, reducing the sales cycle, increasing, mm -hmm. I say onboarding percentage instead of closing percentage because I would rather onboard somebody. So increasing your onboarding percentage, but as much as people had need a need for understanding sales, developing a sales process, having a selling system, they were not able to fill the top of their funnel. Mm -hmm. So that's why I doubled down on LinkedIn back in 2010 when I was, even back then, I helped my salespeople when I was a sales manager, utilize LinkedIn to reduce cold calls and increase meetings while not spending as much time. 2016, when I started my business, people weren't filling the top of their funnel. So mm -hmm. I doubled down on LinkedIn. I developed a process that that works based mm -hmm. on leverage positioning conversion. When you have leverage and positioning, it leads to conversion, mm -hmm. meaning leverage is you're talking to a lot of people, not just one on one on one right. on one through a demographic search. I'm talking psychographic. Mm -hmm. And we could dive into that a little bit. To, to, so what's psychograph? Not psycho. Psychographic. <laughs> right. Okay. Psychographic. So it's we don't, a nobody wants any cycles in our lives, right? Right. It's marketing people. <laughs> yes. So, um, but yeah, it's helping people with the marketing component. And that's one of the, my differentiators. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who are the LinkedIn experts. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to consider myself a LinkedIn expert. I hate the word guru. Um, and I use multiple platforms because you can't just tie yourself to one platform. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you could be there one day and gone the next. 100%. Yes, LinkedIn is a powerful platform, but you got to be able to get people, connect with people so they see you as an authority, have confidence in you, then mm -hmm. you get them off the platform, either to an email list yep. uh, or into a conversation. And as a client or a prospective client, that you have an automated follow-up list. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking about automation on LinkedIn because that's against terms of an agreement. I just want to right. full disclosure there. I'm not for that. Does that make sense to answer your question? Yeah, 100%. So do you have a CRM or a system that you like, a specific tool that you use to, to organize all of those leads and organize, stay on top of what's going on with those people and stay top of mind? Do you have a system uh, you like? Uh, I like I, to take I'm, notes. Here. I'm using Go High Level. That's a great system, yeah. So, yep. Yep. Okay. I, I like it because it's got the, the text message. It has the mm -hmm. landing page templates and it has the CRM and yeah. you can call your email automation directly from there. Yeah, it's that is such a great system. And I think it's probably one of the most like up it. and coming. Uh, there's another one out there, too, for everybody called Flowchat. That's fairly new. Yeah. Um, and that's a really good one as well. So you just have to kind of look at both of them and see what fits your needs. But you need a system of some kind. You need a CRM. So. Uh, great. Yes, I love that. And I talking about the psychographics. So what that really means is you're putting yourself in the head of the customer and your your language and what you're speaking and everything that you're putting out there is around how they're thinking, how they're feeling, that emotion, um, the problems, all of those those kinds of things. And then also showing them a different vision. Uh, anything you want to add to that, Chaz? Sure. So in on LinkedIn, Everyone is, not everyone, a lot of people get on LinkedIn and they're thinking demographics. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with demographics, but 
for people that really don't know this, it's only 3% of people, if you're just doing a demographic, that are ready to make buying decisions. Right. You know, Sales Navigator, which is a premium LinkedIn uh, subscription, they call it a lead list. Right. You know? That's not a lead list. That's not how I, uh, how I would define <laughs> a lead. It's just someone in your geographic area with mm-hmm. a certain position in a certain industry with a certain size company. Psychographic is, yes, they're in your demographic, which I just described, but like for an event, if I'm having an event and someone wants to join my event, they just move from demographic to psychographic because mm-hmm. they're putting their hand up and saying, hey, you're talking about something I have a need for or I have right. an interest in. And so that's the power of focusing on psychographic as, as opposed to wasting your time over and over and over mm-hmm. and over again. And I've been there, done that. I've made that mistake uh, many years ago and you'll get frustrated and mm-hmm. you'll waste a lot of time and you'll you'll get little results. So focus on leverage within a group, within mm-hmm. psychographics, as opposed to just going one-on-one versus a demographic. If you get that down, yeah. it will change your business and it will change your world. 100%. Yes. And we have these tools that we've never, you know, we just haven't had this before. It's It would be kind of like um, in the old days advertising in a magazine where you know your ideal people are. And so everybody's going to see that magazine or everybody's going to see that ad. It's very much the same thing. But now we have these online tools. Um, I know you do audio events. Do you also do a lot of live streams? I do a lot of live streams on LinkedIn. Do you do um, both or do you mainly stay in the audio? What's your preference? You know, I really like audios. I do both. I actually, Mm -hmm. all my audio events end up being live streams. I imagine when you say live streams, you're talking about LinkedIn Live? Yeah, like LinkedIn Lives, yes. Like video. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, like StreamYard or Restream. Yes, Restream. So I'm saying that it's just because LinkedIn, there's a LinkedIn Live, just like Facebook Live, but you can't click Mm -hmm. a button, LinkedIn Live button. You have to use a streaming service. So what I do is with my audio events, I have them, I have them right here. And I have my Zoom 4 box down there, which is a podcaster box. And I record the audio and I'll record mm-hmm. video right here on StreamYard. And then after the event, uh, I'll trim it and then I'll repurpose it as a LinkedIn Live. Mm, that's a great and idea. So, yeah, that, that's yeah, good. And I like it's, that. So it's a different. And so even if it's like Thursday and I replay mm-hmm. it on Saturday, it's a different audience and it's mm-hmm. a different format. And I've never had someone be like, hey, you were talking about the same thing Thursday. <laughs> never. Could yeah. someone say that? Maybe. But so I'm repurposing and then I'm using the video as well. And then I also, you know, we use AI tools. I have someone do this for me mm-hmm. and I cut it up. So I have YouTube shorts and then I mm-hmm. have long form YouTube content from my audio events because I include the video with it. Yeah. I really love that you you shared that you're also videotaping your audio events. That is something I haven't done. Um, and one of the reasons I don't like audio is because I feel like they're not as you can't use them as much. Right. Um, when you when you clip them up, most people aren't going to they can listen to an audiogram, but most people, you know, they resonate with a short video or something. So I, I love that idea. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. it's. If you're going to do something, repurpose it and include Absolutely. video, and 100%. then you can use it in a, in a different format. And I I agree with you. I like the audio format because you can see the people there. They can interact. They could come up mm-hmm. on the virtual stage. You know, yes. LinkedIn Law or LinkedIn Audio is just like Clubhouse. They just yep. basically took the technology mm-hmm. uh, over there. But then when you include video, then they can see you and you can repurpose that. Yeah, I love it. So let's talk a little bit about strategy. I you know I'm a big proponent of LinkedIn, you are, we both do a lot there. What is, when you're doing an audio event, for example, what are you, what are you driving people to? Because I always tell people, start with the end in mind. What is it you're trying to get people to do? And then your event should be leading them to that. So what do you typically out of your audio events? I know you use them to build your list. So that's a really Mm -hmm. important thing for people to know, but what do you like to drive people to out of your audio events? Right. And so just back up a couple of steps. Um, so I have an, an opt in on my profile because you can set up your profile on LinkedIn like a landing page so people can mm-hmm. opt in. And so if, if people go there, mm-hmm. they opt in and they're into my opt in email list, not a cold mm-hmm. email list. And then I could email, I could, I could market to them. Now mm-hmm. they're not just on LinkedIn. So right. that's one thing. Now on the actual events, it's 
marketing is about building confidence in 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 your prospect's mind about you and your solution, as I said mm-hmm. earlier, uh, being able to solve their problem. So that's part of it, but it's also just being able, being familiar with you. Mm-hmm. And when I started doing audio events, I just found that I connected with people and I started getting mm-hmm. a lot of comments. Wow, you have really good energy. Mm-hmm. And so that was good. And so what I do with the audio events is typically I'm experimenting now. I'm doing a, a, a 20 minute format, which I just started about two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. That's on my Tuesday. And so I'm going to take like two main things within some, like I did yesterday, I did soft skills, mm-hmm. soft skills, the essential soft skills to grow sales. And then tomorrow I'm going to, it's going to be a networking collaboration event. I do usually do one of those a month, mm-hmm. but the, I, that is just to connect with people. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people in there. And so they're familiar with me mm-hmm. and just build this like, oh, this Chaz guy is a likable person. So that's mm-hmm. likability on the networking and collaboration events. And I'm going there not to coerce and manipulate. Hey, you like me, but with the intention to serve, mm-hmm. because a lot of people don't have a platform where they could connect with other people. And it's a lot of fun. I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. So typically when I'm doing something else on my Thursday events, or the Tuesday events is I'm taking them from there to a sales and marketing assessment. Mm -hmm. I'll do a call to action. I do several calls to action during the event Mm -hmm. and I do it in such a way. So it's not like cheesy or anything. I'm just Mm -hmm. real with people. I'm talking about this. If you'd like to chat, you know, reach out to me and my, I give my Mm -hmm. email and we'll schedule a 20 minute uh, sales and marketing assessment. Mm -hmm. And I'll analyze your, sales process and your marketing strategy and i could point out the the holes in it because i use the acronym tabs Mm t-t-a-b-s which we could talk about a little bit later yeah what's that what's that tabs thing well maybe we'll talk about it we'll see yeah i Um, can i ask you a quick question on that please do so do you vet people so when people book calls i mean you could get on a million 20 minute calls right so are you vetting people at all to make sure that they're qualified leads or no yes (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, I said, yes. Yeah, I was I was talking with one of my clients, uh, Isabel, and she had uh, like 1,500 people register for her live event. And she had like three weeks of people in her calendar. About 80% of those people in her calendar were not qualified. Right. And so what I did with her, what, what I do is I, if there's a form to fill out. And mm-hmm. so if someone schedules a meeting, they schedule the meeting, they fill out a form, and, mm-hmm. and that that pretty much qualifies them because I'm asking them questions on, is there anyone else involved in the process? Mm-hmm. Do they have a certain amount of money to invest and all this? And it's not that I don't want to help people, but I'm in business to build my business and help those people that can invest in me um, and are committed and coachable. And so yes. all these things are in the form. So they show up and they understand that, yes, I'm going to give them the assessment, but mm-hmm. if I can help them beyond the assessment, then we're going to talk additionally and they know mm-hmm. and understand that. So I very seldom, um, and this by putting that in place to qualify people, it eliminates a lot of people that don't have the money to spend. Yes. Every once in a while, yeah. someone will, will come in and I have no problem talking to them and, and helping mm-hmm. them out. And I just refer them to someone else. Yeah. And here's the thing too, that uh, just to kind of back up what, what Chaz is saying. It's it's not that we don't want to help people, but mm-hmm. here's the thing. When you're in those audio events, when you're doing your live streams, when you're putting out great content, you are helping people. That is the value that you're putting out there for Big people. Time. That doesn't mean that you need to get on a sales call and coach people uh, for free because that is what you get paid to do and so, or consult people. And so mm-hmm. I think it's really important for people to understand that, that we, I put a lot of free content, even my podcasts, we bring massive value uh, to to my audience from my podcast, my YouTube channel, all those things, just like you have, Chaz. And that is our give. That is our time. That is our energy. That is our value and our expertise that we're putting out there. So just to kind of put it in perspective for people, um, it doesn't mean we're, <laughs> we're um, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't mean that we don't want to help or we're too good to help you. It's, it isn't that. This is our helping. And then exactly anything right. beyond that you have to pay for. That's just the way yeah. it is, right? And, so, I, and I tell people that, because I'll have some people that still come back and uh, if, if they 
weren't qualified and they're like, well, what, how, can, how would you do this? And I say, come, go to my live event and ask the question because I have people come up on stage mm-hmm. and I don't hold back. Sure. I, mean, I don't say, I don't give yeah. like one. Now, obviously there's limited time, but mm-hmm. I'm there to help them. And I'm not like sure. give you some surfacey answer. I'm going to help you, but show up to the live event. And to, yeah. to your point, Anne, yes, that's where we serve people mm-hmm. and that's where they can take it and apply it. And if they take it and apply it, they'll get results. I mean, I've had yes. people. One, can I tell you two quick stories? Absolutely, sure. So there, there's this is more. your platform. <laughs> All right, it is. I thought it was yours. Your, All right, it's your spotlight. I'm spotlighting you. All right. You. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, my why is to help you, whoever, see and realize their potential. Because when I grew up, I never thought I had potential. Mm-hmm. And you may think, well, that's sad. It's not because then it I developed a really cool skill set is I was able to see potential in other people because mm-hmm. I never thought I had any. So that thing that was a weakness when I was a kid now is something that's an advantage I have because I can see potential in other people. Mm, so I my why that. is to help people see and realize their potential because I had a person in my life, a boss who became my mentor, mm-hmm. where I went from 119 out of 119 salespeople, zip zero last, no sales to number three in 45 days because he helped me, he encouraged me, and he pointed me to working the system in the process. Mm-hmm. Now, the I power get the power of a mentor. <laughs> yes, it is. You are where you are mm-hmm. because of the expectations of the peer group you surround yourself with. That's right. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. So I was just going down the, that, down a line of, of reasoning, and then I sidetracked because I was talking about my mentor, Ken Upton, and that, oh, the two stories. So uh, Christopher uh, texted me the next day. He goes, Jazz, I just closed two sales using what I learned uh, in the, they, people call it a podcast, but in, in the audio event, mm-hmm. and more people call it a podcast. And then uh, Leah said, Jazz, I just scheduled four meetings the same yeah. day. Well, she, she messaged me. And said, I scheduled two meetings, then an hour later, I scheduled another one. And then like mm-hmm. two hours later, I scheduled another one. And I get those messages consistently. Those are just two that come to mind. Mm-hmm. And so I like that. And here's people that go, they show up, and they learn and apply. And, and you know what's, what's interesting is people will sit in the audience and I'll say, hey, come up on stage if you have a question. And I, I say, I know you have a question. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you all something? as I'm talking to the people in the audience, in the audio room, it's not what people think about you. It's what you think people think about you. Mm. Think about Mm -hmm. that. By the way, people don't care about you. They don't care about me. So if you have a question come up, and usually after I say that, they'll they'll put their Mm -hmm. hand up. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that act on it. If you have a question, ask it. Yes. No matter who's around you, Be so focused on where you want to go on your future self that you ask the question so you can learn and then apply it to your life like Leah and Christopher did. And you know what, Chaz? I mean, we could talk about this all day, but you I say this all the time on live streams and things. Look, people, when you're hiding out, that is not that's not going after your vision and that is not going to help you. When you hide out, when you lurk, when you don't engage, all of those things. And I even use the the thing, when you engage, guess what? Eyeballs now see you because you have just, you've just put yourself in front of people and you're missing out on like these little ninja strategies (laughs) that will help you get more visibility. And you're not serving yourself by doing that. So people need to get out of their own way. Yeah. Let me dovetail on that. So this is so powerful. Everyone out here, and you can you can respond to this too. So if you have a memory from your past, why do you remember that memory? Because you had an emote, whether it's negative or good, mm-hmm. because you had an emotion tied to it. Mm, and yeah. so when you come up on stage, you're getting out of your comfort zone, you're going to ask a question and you're going to remember that Mm -hmm. And just like Leah and Christopher, they applied that. And so if you get yourself out of a comfort zone and ask yourself a question or ask, ask the question of someone amongst your peers, you're going to remember that moment Mm 
Mm-hmm. And it's different than anything else as opposed to just sitting in your comfort zone and you'll just stay stuck. Yep. So get out of your comfort zone and start executing on your thoughts and use the Mel Robbins five second rule if you struggle with that. That's just five, four, three, two, one. Act on your thought. Yeah. It just saved you time from reading the book if you haven't read it yet. I just went <laughs> through a program and and their whole mantra was what the hell do it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same thing. Five, four, three, two, one. What the hell? Do it anyway. What Go. the hell? Do it anyway. So, um, yeah, I love that. I, so good. So good. So I, you have tabs behind you. Let's talk about that. I know that's your program. Uh-huh. I know that's kind of what you're all about. So I want to give you a chance to share that as well. So tell us what tabs is. Yes. So tabs is, and yes, my tabs has two T's. It used to be tab, but then I incorporated marketing. So it's tactic, tactic. That's Mm -hmm. what you do. Sun Tzu, you know, from Art of War said, Mm -hmm. tactics without strategy is a noise before defeat. Now he also said, strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. So you need both of those. And I just gave away S by the way. So you have your tactic, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Then you have your technique, that's how you do what you do. Mm-hmm. So we're in, in communication, influence within communication, it's 7% the words we use, mm-hmm. 38% the tone of the words we use, and 55% body language. So mm-hmm. just by incorporating the right tone, and I talked about soft skills, my event yesterday, when you have the right soft skills and go with the intention to serve, Mm-hmm. It will change what you say. It will change how you say it. A is our attitude, our perspective, our mindset. If mm-hmm. that's off, ain't nothing going to work well. Right. Okay. And if I talk to my clients and they haven't been doing the activities, the first thing I look at is A. Mm-hmm. Okay. B is behaviors. Basically, here's a tactic that you do. Like I'm going to do an event. You do a certain amount of events with the right tactic, technique, attitude, and strategy, then you should Mm -hmm. have a certain amount of qualified meetings and a certain amount of clients. So it's the number of tactics that you do. When you Mm -hmm. know that, then you're going to get a certain result. Okay. If they're all working in unison, and then Mm -hmm. S, that strategy. That's about reaching people based on their need, their want. I'm being redundant here on purpose. So they have confidence in you and your solution Mm -hmm. being able to solve their problem. So mm-hmm. if some if you're not identifying and attracting new clients, meaning scheduling prospect meetings, qualified and onboarding new clients predictably, I guarantee it's one or more of these five things. And when I do the 20 minute assessment, I can within five minutes say, oh, you're using the wrong tactic or you're not even you don't have mm-hmm. a technique or your strategy is lacking. So that's if you have those things working in unison, sales and marketing in alignment, then you'll be able to predictably grow your business. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So good. So, so good. That's such a great framework too. I really love it. Um, And you, gosh, I feel like we could almost do another show, but I do want to dive into some of the shifts, some of the shifts in perspective. I, you know, the mindset work, I do want to dive into that too, because a lot of times people are afraid to do the behaviors. They're afraid to do the tactics. They're afraid to uh, put themselves out there. And you and I know that is what it takes in this industry anymore, unless you're just going to put a bunch of money behind marketing and advertising. However, I work with clients who work with a lot of eight figure clients and they say that the advertising isn't working the way it used to because these gurus have kind of quit doing the brand building, showing up, being there, serving. They're not doing that anymore. They're relying only on paid ads and they're actually costing themselves more money. And Mm -hmm. and also, again, it's that whole no like and trust factor and people want to do business with people. And so if you're to me, you need to do both. Nothing wrong with paid advertising. It's a great way to scale and ramp up, but you need to be doing both. So let's talk about shifts in mindset, Mm -hmm. shifts in the industry perspective, those things. Sure. So let me just give you let me just give you a quick story so people understand. And by the way, I have fears each and every day. Okay, you know. You know, you talk to Ed Milet or Tony, I they don't. still I have, have imposter syndrome. 
Yeah. We all, it's just what you do with that fear. That's right. That's the, that's the difference. And so I, I remember in, in 2004, 2004, I was at a place where I lost everything and I just, I didn't have any belief or anything like this. And I was at the darkest place of my life. I was, um, I looked in the mirror and I saw a fat, depressed guy looking back at me. And at that moment in time, I could do the dopamine hit and grab the donut or walk around the block. And I walked around the block. And little by little, just taking those actions and making those changes over the years, spiritually, my faith in God, uh, physically doing the workout, and then emotionally doing the deep work Mm -hmm. that you need to do because I didn't know how to process my emotions. And that's one of the big things. You know, people call that emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So there's several things that I do when working with clients and shifting their their mindset. Um, First and foremost, you know, if they're not taking action, I'm like, okay, when you get to that thing, do the Mel Robbins five second rule. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a tactic. Okay. It's a tactic. Now let's reframe things. The framing is so important. If you're in sales talking to a prospect, as I was just talking with my clients in my Q&A session a couple early hours earlier, or in the soft skills event I did yesterday, you frame things with a prospect that makes sense to them. Like we end a meeting and someone says, Chaz, that sounds good. Tell you what, follow up in a week. I got to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tell you what, you're busy. I'm busy. To be respectful of both of our time, would it be okay to put a time and date in our calendar so we're not going back and forth a week from now? Yeah. Okay. So I just framed it in a way that he's busy. Okay, let's Mm -hmm. not waste any more time. But I didn't say it's just like, hey, thank you so much for meeting with me. You're equals, but you are the authority guiding and directing Mm -hmm. the process. Now, with our own mind, how we frame things makes all the difference in the Mm -hmm. world. You know, you'll hear Tony Robbins say, you are where you are because of the story you're telling yourself. And what he's saying, if we have a negative frame based on an experience, then we're going to keep replaying that and replaying Mm -hmm. that and replaying that. And we'll be, we'll be tied to our past Mm -hmm. shackled because most of us make decisions based on a pain from our past. I was looking for my jar because I have a jar and I I do my flea analogy, but I could do it without my jar is there's a flea circus. Just go with me on this. Okay. And for a flea circus, you need fleas and to have a fleas, you need to train them. So what does the flea circus trainer do? He trains the fleas by putting them into a jar and fleas could jump. Right. And so he puts the lid on the jar and then the fleas jump. Ow, ow, ow. They hit their head. They're pretty soon they're not jumping so high. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they've been conditioned from the pain from their past that, ow, that hurts to jump so high to reach their potential. Then the flea trainer takes the lid off the jar. They could easily jump out, but they won't because of that pain. So that's the frame they have. Mm -hmm. And I tell my clients all the time, it's like, hey, the lid is off the jar. It's your job to jump out and start living life. You face this traumatic situation. Like I had a someone who he was terrified of doing live events and he did a live event and it was it was terrible. It, it, but that's not what I told him. He, he, he felt so bad. It was this man. I was stumbling. I go, dude, this is your first event. Right. You did it. Look I remember that. my first live of yeah, social yeah, media. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't have video. That was a LinkedIn live and oh, I didn't know it. It was just audio. Mine was on so, Facebook. It was horrendous. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, this is what you need. To, you did your first event mm-hmm. and you were terrified. So you faced your fear. So your frame is you just made progress. Yes. You know, Dan, we talked about uh, Dr. Benjamin Har- Hardy and he's had s- several books that I've read. I'm going through an eight week challenge. And with he him writes right with now. Dan Sullivan a lot too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he does. Yeah. So it's, it's the gap in the gain. This I is love that book. One of my shift. favorites. Yes. So it's we as people, and I'm guilty of this, we'll, we'll look, we'd, we're at a certain place and we look at, oh, I should be here. Mm-hmm. You're just sucking all the oxygen out of your life, all yep. the life, all the joy. Instead of that, look like, how far have I come? That's yes. the gain. If you focus on the gap, then that's the frame. You're like, I haven't gotten mm-hmm. this far. And you're going to be stuck. Focus yeah. on the gain, 
reframe what you're doing and it's about progress not perfection mm-hmm. and and enjoy celebrate those wins now you have to be honest with yourself because you have to truth is the foundation for making change so mm-hmm. framing is very big um the gap in the gain is really big and here's something that i do with with my clients who have a event like let's take this one guy we'll call him melvin not his real name is i take him through a 3d process okay it's Mm three-dimensional this is what i helped to deal with my emotions most of my life or i didn't most of my life because i suppressed them and if you don't deal with your emotions they'll come back much uglier later in life any mm-hmm. Walking Dead mm-hmm. fans out there, like mm-hmm. zombie looking, that's what your emotions are going to come back much uglier, right? That's why if you get in an argument and all of a sudden it's like, ah, why did you do that? Because you've You're been suppressing your emotions. Yes. Right. Yeah. So the, the, the 3D process is this. First dimension, what is the story you're telling yourself? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this guy was telling himself he's a loser, he's an imposter. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so so you identify that. Get the emotions out, ah, cuss, scream, whatever you do, get them out. Mm -hmm. Then the second D, second dimension is what are the facts without emotion? So Mm -hmm. I did my first live event and I said, dude, how many clients have you served so far? 25, are they happy with your work? Yes. Okay, so what else do we, and so I I took him through this whole thing and now he's starting to see things a little differently. Mm -hmm. Then the third D is what if the opposite story is true mm, yeah and this is about it's just like it's not about me being a loser or being an imposter it's about me growing and i just made progress and now i'm mm. going to get even better so that 3d process it's helped me in so many times to deal with imposter syndrome or negative mm. emotions or when i deal with something where i where i failed and fell on my face and it's helped my clients a lot as well so good. I love that. I actually, I really love those three questions. Um, I have similar questions too, but they're a little bit different than that. So I love that. Thank you. Oh my gosh. This has been so much fun, Chaz. I have yeah. absolutely loved having you on here. You, you are, you are just so great at what you do. And I enjoy, I enjoy listening to you. And, you know, that's the mark of someone that is, that really knows what they're doing is when people that also know what they're doing, enjoy learning from you and listening to you right so um so yeah, good thank you okay. so much i really enjoyed our, our conversation it's been it's been awesome we'll have to do it again sometime yes 100 percent. so how can people get a hold of you what's the best way what do you want to drive them to from here yeah two things you go to my link you just go chaz horn on linkedin you can connect mm-hmm. with me and say hey i saw you talking with ann i enjoyed your conversation and tell me about one of your takeaways from the conversation um, if you go to my LinkedIn page, um, you can also sign up for my event. There is a landing page there, or you can just go to B2B, the letter B, like boy, the mm-hmm. number two, B, B2Bclientsnow.com. And you can register for my live event, and you'll also get updates for replays and additional training. So there's two ways uh, to get a hold of me. Love it. And we will make sure that those links and you run those events, you run different events all the time. So that link is going to be good. We'll make sure that's in the show notes of this podcast as well. So, um, so good. So good. Thank you so much for being on. It has been so much fun. Yeah. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. You are welcome. All right, everyone. Thanks for being with us. Make sure you like and share because sharing is caring. And we would love for you to subscribe to the Expert in You podcast. And again, share it with your friends. Wait, I bring on these incredible guests like Chaz. And you just learn so much from every single guest that I bring on. I really bring on true experts. So, um, so happy to have you here. And until next week, God bless you all. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this episode, I want to invite you to go check out a free training that I have at expertinu.us. It is a training that I have on how you can get ultra premium dream clients, scale your business, get more freedom, and really simplify your business and multiply your money. So go check that out. And again, that is expertinu.us. 
I want to thank you for being here with me this week. I hope you found massive value. Please always leave a comment, feedback, or a question. We check them all. And I want you to go rock your business and make sure you join us again next week. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.